Hello everyone, I guess you're all aware that there are three lanes in a jungle in League of Legends, as well as five roles. Mid laner, top laner, ADC, support and jungler. But do you know why tanks and fighters usually go to the top lane, why it's the bottom lane that is held by two champions, and what a jungler even does? This and many other things is what we'll explain in this video. So let's start with the most common question that League of Legends beginners have. Why even have a jungler if you can just hold the top with two people? After all, together you'll be stronger and it will be easier for you to destroy the turret. There are multiple answers to that question and they are interrelated. Firstly, mid and top turrets have fortification, a passive skill that absorbs 50% of damage for 5 minutes after the game starts, so it doesn't make much good to attack the top turret before 5 minutes have passed. It's more profitable to use this time to farm in the jungle and take the lead in gold. Secondly, a jungler can earn his own experience and gold in the jungle, so the top laner doesn't have to share. If you stand on one lane 2 vs 1 long enough, you'll notice that sooner or later the enemy will start to get more levels than you, and soon he can fight you both on his own. A team with a jungler that plays vs a team with no jungler won't have trouble taking the lead. Because their jungler will earn two persons worth of experience farming both his and the enemy's jungle which will make him the strongest player on the map because of the advantage in levels and items. Besides, a jungler puts pressure on all lanes because he can gank them in a crucial moment. Also, it's not just ganks. For example, you can help push a lane or assist a teammate who is getting harassed and prevented from farming. Or gank just to intimidate the enemy, making them play less aggressively. And finally, you need Smite to conquer the most important epic monsters, Baron Nasha, Dragons and the Rift Herald. So let's summarize the scenario in which you have two top laners and no jungler. The enemy's jungler will have two jungles to himself and will soon become OP. You won't be able to take down the turret early because of fortification. You'll be sharing experience between two people, so most likely you won't be able to dive the enemy champion because his level will be higher than yours. Even if you farm 40 to 50 minions more than the enemy's topper, he will still get to level 6 sooner than you and he will kill you together with his jungler. You can jungle with a lot of completely different champions, starting with simple tanks like Amumu, Gragas, Sejuani, Zac or Ramus, assassins like Diana, Evelyn or Kha'Zix, fighters like Lee Sin, Shivana or Olaf, and ending with mages and even supports like Fiddlesticks, Nunu and Ivern. Of course, this is far from a complete list of jungler champions, which also changes following the meta. At some point, even some marksmen like Ezreal were popular junglers, and even now you can meet Graves or Kindred. Ok, so now let's move to the solo lanes. There are two of them in the game, top lane and mid lane. Top lane usually goes to a tank or a fighter. The mid lane is usually for squishy mages and marksmen. Of course, every rule has exceptions and you can see the squishy queen on the top lane and the tank Galio on the middle lane, but there are reasons for that. On a solo lane, you don't have to share your experience like the ADC and the support do on the bottom lane, so mages, tanks and fighters get the most profit from solo lanes because they need lots of experience and levels rather than gold. The top lane is long compared to mid lane. Champions with low maximum HP and lack of defense and no reliable escape abilities will have trouble to realize themselves there. They are easy to gank if they stroll far away from their turret, they are easy to zone if they lose just a bit of health. Besides, mages need the blue buff after level 7 to use their skills for harassing the enemy. Marksmen, who are generally really weak before they get some items, simply can't withstand the onslaught of mages or fighters on the lane. Another distinguishing feature of the top lane is that it's easy to dive the enemy with your jungler. The distance between towers T1 and T2 is big enough for you to easily get to safety even if you're too far under the enemy T1 tower. The middle lane also has its own quirks. Firstly, as we already mentioned, this lane is shorter than top or board, so it's the safest for champions without escape abilities. Secondly, it's the closest to the base, so you can afford playing on it without teleporting, not being afraid of losing too many minions while returning from the base. From the middle lane, you can roam both top and bot. The biggest profit from this goes to mages who can quickly push a lane with their abilities. For the same reason, you can quickly join your team if there is a team fight on important early and mid game objects, dragons or the rift herald. Getting the blue buff from your jungler is the easiest on this lane, both on the blue and the red sides. So why is it mages who go to the mid? First of all, it has to do with the fact that they get all the lane experience and don't share it with the support. 
Mages scale well because of their spells dealing more damage with levels, and most importantly, you need to have magical damage in your team, or your enemies will build a lot of armor to the point where you can't kill them. And it's easier for mages to farm on the short lane, because they'll get zoned on the top, and on the bot they share their experience with the support. And finally, we come to the bottom lane. Perhaps the main question that bothers people is why the bottom lane is the place for two people and not mid or top. A long time ago, when the game just came out and the meta was still forming, there were times when two people played on the middle lane or on the top. But pretty soon the double formation became common on the board. The main reason was that the dragon, a very valuable object that must be protected, spawns closer to the bottom lane. If your marksman and support go to the top, and the only person left at the board is your solo laner, the enemy team will be able to easily take the dragon using the advantage in numbers in the area of the map. The bot duo was completely consolidated with the change in the middle of the 6th season, with which Riot decided to prevent the teams from performing line swaps, that is, spreading their duo lanes in different parts of the map. Firstly, Riot gave turrets on the middle and top lanes the passive ability fortification, that made them more durable in the first 5 minutes of the game. And secondly, now destroying the first turret yielded more gold, similar to first blood. Because of this, defending the bottom turret that didn't have fortification became extremely important. But why is this duo consists of ADC and support? The reason is that most marksmen are extremely weak at the start of the game. To inflict significant damage with auto attacks, they need items that improve crit, items that improve attack speed and items that improve damage. Until then, they need support. That's why they are accompanied by utility supports that improve their survivability with healing and shields, support mages that give them more damage in early game, support tanks that take enemy attacks to themselves and prevent the marksman from being attacked. By the way, why does a team even need a marksman? The thing is, marksmen, also known as AD carries, can destroy turrets really fast because of the damage and speed of their auto attacks. Besides, since your meta usually deals magic damage, your team needs physical damage for balance. The balance of physical and magical damage is important so that your enemy doesn't have an opportunity to buy a lot of armor of one type, but rather has to balance between building physical defense and magic resistance. The balance of a team's peak of power during the game is important as well. Mages, also known as AP carries, are stronger in early and mid game, while ADCs are real rulers of the late game. Years of the game's development optimized both the assignment of champions to lanes and the functionality of lanes themselves. But that doesn't mean that the game stopped evolving and you must play strictly by the meta, without being able to invent anything new. Not at all. Not that long ago, the bottom marksman position was taken by the Juggernaut Mordekaiser, and even now the Mage Zix can be there. The tank Galio does really well on the middle lane, and you can see the marksman Lucian on the top lane. So everything is in your hands. Thanks for watching this video guys, we hope it's helped you to understand the origins of the current meta and will also help you to choose the right champion for the right lane to suit the team setup.